98.6% of you do not know every single Stardew Valley fact in this video. Go ahead, try and prove me wrong. You already know that pigs are just the most profitable animal in the game, but why? Well, it's simple. Each pig will find a single truffle per day. However, if your pigs are happy, they can find more than one. If you have max heart pigs, they can find three pieces of truffle per day. With the botanist profession, that is 3,000 gold every single day. And if you turn the stuff into truffle oil, that is 4,400 gold every single day. They are just unmatched. Naturally, you can drop hats on yourself, your horse, your scarecrow, your children, and even on your sea urchins. And soon on your cat and dog as well. Nice. To get all of the achievements in this game, you will have to complete the Jojo route at least once. This is sad, but it is true. To make this easier, complete the community center like normal until you have just a single bundle left. That way you can still get the rewards from the community center as there are no rewards for completing the treacherous Jojo route. There are some incredible rewards that you might miss out on like a crystallarium and all kinds of very helpful items. If you hate Jojo, hit subscribe, trying to hit 50 Okay, we are so close. Elliot, Penny, Leah, Robin, Jody, Vincent, and Sandy. They all have red hair. That is 19% of the entire population in Stardew Valley. In the real world, only 3% of people have red hair, making Stardew Valley an incredible anomaly. Your dead grandfather gave you this farm. Mr. Key believes in you and he has your back the entire way. How are they connected? They must be right. Your grandfather will give you this weird statue in your third year that generates iridium ore every single day. Mr. Key will give you a very similar looking statue after you have reached perfection that generates prismatic shards every day. Strange, maybe your grandfather is Mr. Key? I don't know, probably not. If you are not married yet, then go and get Krobus to 10 hearts and buy a Void Pendant from the Desert Trader for 200 Void Essence. Now don't you go and give it to him, no, drop it in a chest and then you can buy another one from the Desert Trader. As soon as you give one of these to him or get married, you will be unable to buy them. They do sell for 4,500 gold, but it is not worth it as 200 Void Essence sells for 10,000 gold. Instead, use them to decorate your home, they really do make for an interesting decoration item. It takes 42 seconds for a single hour to pass in Stardew Valley. However, time is slower in the Skull Cavern as it takes 52 seconds for a single hour to pass in there. This allows you to get deeper in the Skull Cavern without having to worry as much on the time. Unfortunately, this does mean that your edible buffs will not last as long in the Skull Cavern, but that is fine. This is important, so listen carefully. Prehistoric floors like this for some reason cause time to pass at the normal faster rate. So always bring a staircase and skip these horrible floors. Speaking of staircases, there's a very odd use for the staircase. Just drop it into your trouser clothing slot and it will magically turn into a pair of trimmed lucky purple shorts. The same shorts that you can use to harass Mayor Lewis with. And if you don't have a staircase, then drop a gold bar into a sewing machine for the same effect. Do not forget to say hi to Marnie in your new drip. Wheat seeds only cost 10 gold each. Wheat only takes 4 days to grow. You can drop wheat into a keg to turn them into beer and it only takes a single day. Beer sells for 280 gold and it only costs you 10 gold per serving. This is easily the most cost effective way to get rich in Stardew Valley in the early game. Do not sleep on wheat. It is much better than you expect. Just do not age beer in casks as that takes an entire season and the time investment is not worth it. If you wear two lucky rings, eat magic rock candy, drink buffed up ginger ale, get the special lucky charm and wait for the best possible luck day, you will have an 11% chance of finding a treasure floor on every single floor that you encounter past floor 10 in the skull cavern. 11% means that you will find more treasure floors and you will know what to do with the stuff. You will get an auto petter. You will get everything you ever wanted. Use a dinosaur egg in the sewing machine to craft up a dinosaur hat. Then use some dinosaur mayonnaise to craft up this pair of dinosaur pants. And to finish off the outfit, use an emerald in the sewing machine to craft up this perfectly matching shirt. You are now a dinosaur. Let's see if they will still attack you on sight. Diamonds are crucial. Yeah, they will make you a ridiculous amount of money if you abuse crystallariums and the gemologist profession. But that is not what I am referring to. Diamonds are loved by eight of the townspeople. If you are aiming for perfection, then you need to 
always carry some diamonds in your inventory. You will thank me later. If you are in the early game, make sure that you pick the excavator profession. This will double the chances of finding a geode in the mines. Yes, the gemologist profession is great on diamonds, but all of the other gems sell for so little that it is not even worth it. Instead, stockpile geodes, finish the museum and sell all the other garbage you get from Clint for profit. Getting that star drop at the museum is more important than a couple extra hundred gold. Chickens are not very good for money, chickens are also not very cute at all, they are nothing when compared to the swimming ducks. However, blue chickens on the other hand, now you are onto something. Just get Shane to 8 hearts and watch the cutscene. Then buy some chickens from Marnie. Do not forget that you can see the colour of the chicken at the top of the screen before you finalise your purchase. Get them blue chickens bruh. This is important so pay attention. Journey of the Prairie King is a joke, it's incredibly easy. All you need to do is beat a single level without getting hit, then quit, go sleep and save your progress. Then continue on to the next level the next day. If you take damage, reset and try again. This method will get you the hardest achievement in the entire game with pure ease. It really is a joke if you use this save scumming method. You can actually use the piano in Elliot's house, but if you play an actual song like this one, for example, in this exact order, Elliot will turn towards you and show you a heart. To make this work, move your character to the quadrant and click on the piano. Your character needs to be on the correct spot, not your cursor. Monster Musk is incredible. This stuff will dramatically increase the amount of enemies that spawn in the Skull Cavern and even in the regular mines. If you need tons of loot, this stuff with a burglar ring is unstoppable. Now for the bad news. Monster Musk does not work in the volcano. You will be unable to farm for mountains of cinder shards. It is what it is. Your inventory is tiny, small and even insignificant. But why would you only have chests on your farm? Nah, you need chests all over the world. However, if a villager finds one of your chests, they will absolutely destroy them with no mercy. Unless you keep your chest safe with chairs. A chair will cause the villagers to temporarily become ghosts, allowing them to phase through your chests, keeping them safe. If you want to look unique, you need to dye your clothing. This is considerably easier if you use a rainbow shell. It will open up this window that will allow you to go absolutely crazy and pick exactly what you want. If you don't have any, you can always fill up all the dye pots inside of Emily's house. Use low value items instead of these that I am using. This will also allow you to pick any colour you can imagine for your clothing. This is absolutely depressing. As you know, a fairy can come by and force all of your crops to be ready for harvesting. This is incredible, especially if it happens to some juicy ancient fruit. However, the fairy can also come and try her magic on dead crops. She might be magical, but she cannot bring those back to life. With extreme difficulty, you could reach level 10 fishing without ever casting your fishing line. You can do this by buying fish from Krobus and dropping them into fish ponds. Then go to the river in front of the mines when it is raining in spring and cast your line. When the legend bites, you will be unable to miss this catch. You will always catch your first fish. This time, it just happened to be the hardest fish in the game. As you know, you can sell your crops to Pierre. He will take them, but you can also sell cooked meals to Pierre as well. If you sell him regular quality cooked meals like normal salad, he will then sell those to the villagers of the valley. And since it is just normal quality, they will not enjoy it. They hate your cooking. Catch a slime inside of the Stardrop Saloon and inside of Pierre's house. These are places where many villagers visit often. The slimes will be very friendly to the villagers and even greet them, but they will still attack you on sight. They have no mercy. Slimes just hate you for some reason. It can get dark in Stardew Valley, so light up your farm with torches. The problem is that torches are ugly and will ruin your perfect aesthetic. Just hide torches behind objects like trees. They will still illuminate even though they are hidden. It looks inconceivably better. Go light it up my son. Back in the day, you could sneak into the casino using the out of bounds glitch at the desert oasis. Unfortunately, this has been patched out and now the bouncer will kick you out and drop a bomb on you. This bomb can even knock you out if your health is low enough. 
if you use console commands to complete the community center like a little cheater the community center will never actually be correctly restored it'll look horrible inside forever if you have many many animals you should most likely have more than one silo so that you can stockpile enough food to feed them right no that is horrible instead use a bomb on some hay this will allow you to take hay out of the hopper then grab a bunch and drop it into a chest next to your silo this will save a ton of space on your farm ever tilled a part of your farm and accidentally picked up your scarecrow like this yeah this will happen and it is horrible fortunately there is a solution simply place a floor under your scarecrow for some reason this prevents the scarecrow from being dropped when you use your hoe this is the strange capsule it will randomly spawn on your farm and after three days it will crack open and the creature will escape this is a stone owl it doesn't do anything but it will also randomly spawn on your farm these used to be so incredibly rare that they were believed to be myths this was fixed in the 1.5 update making them actually appear on your farm now that was 30 Stardew Valley facts I bet you did not know. This next video has 12 things that you are underestimating. Thanks for watching, but for now, I will see you in the next video.